Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to another stream. <laughs> okay, I hope all of this works fine. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, so, I already have the file open. So, I planned for this to be kind of the last stream for this specific sculpt before moving on to something else next week. I will see how long I w it will take to, for me to actually finish this because there's still a little bit I want to take care of. Like just looking at this, um, I, won't, I won't add any textures. I think this is obvious at this point, um, but I do want to add a bit of color variation, a bit more um, in a, a bit more color variation, especially on uh, based on ambient occlusion and cavity. Uh, the branch and the hair still need a bit of work. Um, they are kind of blocked out and there's a lot of stuff missing if you look from other angles. And the same is pretty much the case for the horns. And there's other elements that need a bit more polish. Uh, so this is kind of mainly what it's going to be about today, uh, polish. And then hopefully this can be taken even further um, afterwards, but we'll see about that. Um, my goal for now is really just to have a nice polished sculpt. Also, I'm gonna turn on some music. I can just have this run in the background. Perfect. Uh, okay, then let's get right into it. So, um, this is all pretty much still exactly how I left it. Uh, I think the last thing I worked on was actually the, the little scales over here. And there are actually some little elements still missing. I should like, <laughs> should like annotate these just so I don't forget them. They're like these little, oh, it's actually placing it on the 3D cursor right now. Uh, they're actually these little scales and it would be nice to still uh, add them. <laughs> um, but I think the main thing I will start with right now is just uh, the hair. Uh, it's still a big to do and I should just get it over with so I think I'll just continue with it the same way I did before uh, which is really just to go in here and uh, add more of these clumps so hold on I think I could also oh Jesus um, Make this connected only, yes. And then I can just like move this around a little bit in edit mode. Sadly, these are right now just uh, uh, little edges like um, that just add thickness with the, um, with the skin modifier. So I wish I could just go directly into sculpt mode with these. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate more of these. Rotate them around. I'm going to turn off proportional editing again. And then with the tweak tool or like just by click and dragging, I can adjust the placement. There we go. Um I think one of the things I really want to do right now is to reduce the volume over here of this thing. Oh wait, actually, uh, let me just quickly open the browser. I want to try something. I should have done this before, damn it. Um, if I go to blender.org on the download page, if I go to download, then down here we have download experimental and here can, you can try out the latest alpha versions. Uh, but I want to go even more experimental and click on experimental branches. 
And here you have the like really weird experimental stuff where a lot of things are being played around with. And I want to download the latest sculpt development branch because I just a little bit ago actually um, forced it to build uh, again and uh, update. So now, wait, don't exit. Let's download it first. Perfect, it's downloaded. So now if I go in here and I'm just gonna grab it, I'm just gonna throw it in the documents folder and extract it here. Uh, I'm gonna have the latest up-to-date version available. I'm gonna save this and quit it. And now, there we go, 4th of April, uh, no, this one. Hold on. It's not fully extracted yet, is it? No. Now it is. Okay, I just want to use the latest, latest version because there has been actually like a little experimental feature added just a day ago, which I really want to use. Um, Pablo de Barro added uh, an, like, and kind of as an experiment, a replacement for the fade inactive geometry overlay, which is really useful for showing you on which object you're currently working on. Um, but if I turn it off, I can also just, yes, I can also just immediately switch to another object and it's going to like flash for a moment, which <laughs> it's, it's like, it's an early test. Um, it looks kind of glitchy, but I want to try it at least because this at least, oh my god, it is really extreme. But it does uh, make a huge difference, especially when working on colors, that you don't need to always have this overlay on, which is just going to be on top of all of the colors that you're actually working on. So now I can just turn off this overlay and if I switch to another object, I just immediately get that flash, which um, I might actually change it back. <laughs> it is super distracting. But yes, I wanted to take away volume over here. And now, okay, I can just go to this object over here. And thanks a lot, Mike, for uh, answering questions in the chat. Uh, if you tag Blender Studio in the chat, I can also more easily see it and answer any questions you have. Um. Very inspiring that the Blender team seemingly has many young people. Yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, especially with um, a lot of the people that have been hired in the last couple of years. I feel like <laughs> a lot of them are, are under 30. So there's like a lot of talent being um, uh, brought on and developed. But we're also uh, trying to get some uh, more senior staff or like a senior um, people who have a lot of experience to also then share knowledge among uh, all the rest of us. I think at some point I want to split this off into multiple layers, like into multiple different objects. Like I, I could just pick this one and separate it into a new object. And I can still immediately switch between them with a, a um, switch op uh, with the switch object operator. Um, oh, I should actually enable the screencast keys. 
Um, this will make it a bit easier to follow what I'm actually pressing. Although I do have a bit of a custom key map. Um, okay. So. There we go. Hmm. do wonder um, I think I'm gonna adjust these all of these clumps in a in a moment heavily um, but I'm gonna do that via sculpting let's just grab uh, this one and separate it into its own object and actually just join it with this object I want to keep uh, the, the clumps over here in the middle uh, pretty asymmetrical. And although I'm like mainly making this for the camera perspective, I would love it if, uh, uh, if it can be viewed from all different angles and still work. going to open the skin modifier and mark this as the root over here this vertex and now this duplicated geometry also works there we go I'm a bit worried that this is going to look very busy with all of these clumps. It's a lot. So I think what I'm going to do is let's just separate this, join it with this object. I want to make the clumps on the back way bigger. So let's just scale this up with control A. I can resize the, the thickness of the skin modifier. I just need to rearrange this a little bit. Um, I'm fine with there being a bit more high frequency detail uh, neck, uh, towards the face, but I don't need that much detail on the back of the head. I'm fine with it being bigger and broader over there. Oh well. Let's see. Okay. I think there's a lot to talk about right now. Uh, just adding the last clumps over here. Um, I think I can move this one a bit more up. Should be fine. such a big salad um, it's gonna be interesting to to keep the overall shape pr 
relatively simple. I don't think this is looking that great right now. Hmm. What could I do? Could like so let's see. Yeah, I hope that this flashing effect is... Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is right now just a test, so I'm just gonna experiment with it, but uh, using it, but uh, this needs to be updated. Th this cannot land in Blender like this. Um, but it's already a good idea, and it's, it's the way forward, I think. Um, now this, this part is what I need to update. Um, also these down here, I'm gonna separate them also into their own object. Wait a moment, just as a, like a workflow thing, like, okay, let's say I have these selected and I separate them into their own object. Yeah, and then I immediately go switch to this object. Okay, that makes it easier. <laughs> I need to use this um, operator more to switch immediately to an object into edit mode or sculpt mode. It's interesting that I'm still I still need to get used to it myself. Uh, oh yeah, Mike, uh, what was the new feature you wanted to test? Well, the main thing I why I updated Blender uh, a moment ago is uh, because there's this new test. Uh, this new experimental feature of just trying to remove this overlay which like fade in active geometry it just shows you uh, what object you're currently working on so if I go into sculpt mode on this one uh, I immediately see it and this is especially useful when like switching between objects over here um, uh, you immediately see which one you just entered but it's like obscuring all the colors and just making it hard to see. So the idea is to eventually replace it with a flash or like some animated overlay that is immediately showing you which object you just entered in. Um, although this is right now a bit hard on the eye. <laughs> oh well. But it works. Um, so I could just go into edit mode, go into edit mode on this object, immediately flash between them. Um, edit mode on, just go into edit mode on this object, or this or, oh, or this object. It just immediately puts me into it. Oh. Oh, the shortcut I have set for it is actually competing with another one. Mm. Usually it's just on D, but I had it set to Alt Shift D for now. Well, that though well, that seems to be doing something else. Oops. with how this looks right now. Hmm. Let's just duplicate, oh, this is actually a mirrored one. Uh, let's just duplicate this part. Um, mirror it over with control M. Uh, I'm gonna actually join this with this object over here. There we go. Um, oh, 
That was actually the chat. <laughs> I should mute that. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see, let's just uh, kind of zoom out and see what I could be doing about the hair because this is, especially this transition over here is just not working for me right now. I think I'm gonna, let's just switch on smooth shading. Um, let's just select all of these right now and switch smooth shading on. Um, And I'm just gonna enable cavity for a bit because I want to get a sense of like how this would look with a bit of ambient occlusion effect, even though it doesn't quite look like the, how it would look later on, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't like how this is just sticking together. Uh, hi, sorry, reading the chat for a moment. Um, tutorial on the blender, uh, on making hair in Blender, replicating your haircut. Uh, maybe, uh, would be nice to do that in a bit more focused way. This is right now just kind of throwing stuff together. But I mean, this is a uh, relatively s uh, simple uh, setup where you just need you just need an object that ha uh, consists of edges and i can just turn off these modifiers there's just an edge um, with individual vertices and you can just add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth these to like add more resolution add a skin modifier to add thickness which you can control with uh, control a and then a subdivision surface modifier again to subdivide this even more um, and then once you apply all of these, you can also sculpt on this, which I intend to do. Um. Yeah, I think I'm, let's just get rid of one of these. I want to make this simpler. It's just, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> just because it's so much noise. It's all of these different clumps and they're just all getting the same amount of atten attention and it's just making it look super busy. Um, especially over here, like look at this. This is, can I just scale this up? And this over here, scale it also up a bit. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweak this more uh, once I go into a sculpting. I just want to Especially adjust the, the overall shapes a bit more. Like uh, the bigger silhouette. Like I can also just like, if you go into uh, like uh, over here, like typically I have it on like uh, matcap and material. You can also set it to single and then uh, flat and just set the color to black and then you can just immediately check out the silhouette. Um, I have it with a script to just like immediately check all of these boxes, but it's just, it's just clicking through this essentially and toggling some things on or off. Uh, uh, I'm not planning to make the hair more fuzzy. Um, I'm gonna keep it relatively smooth and simple. 
And if we do any more texturing or like shading on this character, it would be nice to do that via those. That would make the most sense. Let's see, can I select all of this? Can I rotate it around? to add a, uh, a couple more clumps to bridge these shapes a bit more. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about like contrast between straight and curved hair. Uh, because I want this hairstyle to be generally very curly. Um, but I will see. I think I'm I'm pretty close to just applying the modifiers and then figuring out the rest in sculpting. Um, let's just increase the thickness over here a bit. Also, I'm gonna probably press this all a bit further in just so um, it's losing a bit of volume. But I can do that in a moment in sculpting. Let's just actually also hide the annotations. Um, let's do that right now. I'm just going to um, make a... No, I'm going to select all of these. Uh, is it all? Yeah, all of these. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate these and just throw them into the helpers collection that I made. Just so I have like a backup somewhere. I'm gonna save. And now I will apply all of these modifiers. And the fastest way to do that is to just select all of them. And then with Control A, you can select uh, apply visual geometry to mesh. And this is essentially just applying all modifiers, all shape keys, all kinds of things that are um, um, that make this geometry look like this and just actually making this the mesh. So now I have this as the actual geometry. Um, I can switch between these objects and over here on these um, I would like to turn off symmetry and the other two can have symmetry still on. Yeah, like that. Um, a stretched noise shader to simulate hair strands uh, in Eevee. Yeah, I could I could add that, but I I'm I'm not gonna uh, worry too much about. Uh, uh, about adding de uh, like actual shaded detail on top. Okay, for the grab brush, I want to actually enable this experimental option over here, use surface fall off. And what this does is that it actually um, lets the grab brush have a fall off that follows the geometry. So it's like, it's going to essentially go all through this tube and gradually become uh, less strong. This is actually really useful. Uh, let's see. Okay. Hmm, okay, I made this, put this onto local view. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these and put them back into flat shading. Um, uh, let's select them again and I'm going to also add 
some subsurface modifiers just to keep it smooth. Uh, can I still go into scope mode and edit these in real time? No. <laughs> Let's undo until I get back to this point and add only like one subdivision. Yeah, this is still fine. Um, I'm going to switch into this object and just push it down even more. Uh, and what I'm actually going to do is with the exception of the objects here in the center, I mean I'm going to this this line, I'm just going to merge it. And these two objects which are uh, symmetrically uh, symmetrical, I'm also going to merge them. And then I will just add face sets to this. Let's just add face sets based on loose island. Like this. Same thing over here. I think I might use them in a bit, but it also makes it a bit easier to see in like uh, these individual parts. What I wanted to do is to actually grab all of this stuff and just with n no auto masking. Oh, for that I need to turn off this option again. With no auto masking, just push this in a bit more. I want to remove more of the volume of the all of this hair. Same thing really on this object. Just push it in more. Like just to match it a bit closer to the concept art, like this doesn't have uh, that massive of a of an hairstyle, not quite. Okay, same thing I need to do for the object in the center. still an interesting question. <laughs> I can push this up for forward. Um, save. this a bit in with a snake hook brush. Let's see. 
I think the hair, the hair is actually pretty challenging. Um, just making this look nice. Oh, uh, the eyes are actually clipping through here. Um, I could just adjust this a bit. Actually, yeah, let me isolate this. Ah, oh, no, this is all looking fine. Fine enough. I wonder how much I can close all of this off with the hair clumps that I have. Um, so you can see as little of this ball underneath as possible, like this one. Um, Switch back to Eevee. Uh, yeah. No, I'm gonna keep working in here for now. Oh, cavity sauce is still on. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it on for now. this also still visible here. Um, there we go. Okay, wait, I'm gonna remove the hair for a moment because there's also another thing that is, oh, that is needed. Let's also remove the branch. And that is, there's this, uh, there's this little fluff of chest hair <laughs> for the goat. I mean, this is also, I don't think he, like there's like anything on the hoofs or anything. No, no. But I could at least, um, let's just try to add it. Uh, on this object directly. So I'm going to hide the hooves over here. Also the arms. Nah, I'm gonna keep them. And let's just, with the clay strips brush, I'm gonna remove symmetry. I'm going to, oh, that was, that's very strong. I'm going to just add this volume. this. Oh, it's really strong. I'm gonna reduce the strength a bit on the clay strips rush. Hmm. Like 
this with the draw sharp brush I can then refine this a bit more I think. Let's see. Mm. This needs to be pushed out more. Still noticing these when you use the grab brush that it like creates these hard edges. Well, uh, let's just bring the rest back. a bit weird. I'm gonna at least reduce it in volume so it doesn't look like he has like a giant ball in his throat. <laughs> getting a bit sidetracked here working on too many things at once but uh, I think this is gonna be worth it uh, so let's just grab this paint this a bit more in doesn't do anything oh because it's oh I was not using vertex colors <laughs> Of course. Well. Well, well, well. Okay. Oh well, uh, let's just get back to the hair. And I'm also going to switch this to smooth shading. Finally. <laughs> okay, the hair. Mm. Oh, I turned off the face sets.
think I'll actually uh, apply these modifiers here as well. We'll make the performance a bit better. Right, I... That's how I noticed, that's why I shifted over to doing the... Uh, the neck part, because I wanted to actually add also a clump over here. Just like this, kinda. And then adjust this into shape. It is looking a bit different from the concept art, uh, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm also just trying to make it look kind of good from multiple angles. Another thing that uh, should also be adjusted probably for this overlay is that it flashes the object um, uh, essentially all the way visible through other objects. That's an also not ideal maybe. It can be very distracting. It also I mean, kind of models the shape what you're actually seeing, so it's hard to tell which object you actually switched into right now. And that's the entire point of this. this um, first of all I would like the color underneath to be a bit darker I want to uh, achieve kind of this effect that's going on over here in the concept um, so let's just uh, I'm actually going to open the shading workspace let's just do it over there so we go into shading <laughs> the goat is back. <laughs> um, let's just hide this. Okay. Uh, let's just look for the ambient occlusion note. I want to look 
I want to see how the ambient occlusion actually looks like. Um, that's fine. Okay. I need to actually plug this into a color ramp just to see what I can do with it. Let's just do something like this. And I'm going to copy this color over here. And... Oh, wait. This color over here. Like that. Let's just get rid of the, of the world of hazard. Okay, like that. Okay, I'm gonna plug that into the color. There we go. It just adds a bit more contrast. So, but I would also like to do that maybe as local only. No, 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 that's not a good idea. Let's just keep it like that for now. Uh, go back to canvas. That's where I was mainly working in. I'm going to make... I'm gonna keep the, the hair simple like this for now. Um, but I'm th I'm I'm thinking right now how I want to handle this in a bit. Like, do I want to maybe uh, remesh this to get a bit more control, but then I lose sh um, like basically a bit more control to get rid of these artifacts, but then I lose essentially any way of shaping this since right now it is really just a separated geometry or do I want to just start to wildly sculpt on this maybe with a multi-res Let's just actually switch to a multi-res. I don't need any um, complex color information for this. So what I can do is I can add a multi-res modifier and I can first unsubdivide that way I get the like lowest resolution back <laughs> essentially over here. Um, for the viewport I can still increase it. Uh, but it's just going to make it a bit more optimized. Unsubdivide, unsubdivide, unsubdivide. And I keep the original shape. Okay. I wouldn't do that on the, even though I could, I wouldn't do that on the body because here I painted a bit of vertex colors and I would lose these because uh, vertex colors are not right now supported for uh, multi-res. Okay, so what I would like to do is just to, uh, let's see, oh, Jesus, what was that? Subdivide this again. Yeah, I'm gonna try to just uh, add a bit of detail. Yeah, let's just expand a mask. I love this. Like with Shift A, you can of course expand a mask like usual, but you can also just expand a long topology. And man, this is so satisfying. <laughs> uh, and then I can also, of course, smooth the mask. And now I don't have to worry about. Um, sculpting on this part. 
So I would like to keep this, like, just relatively rough. Oh. Uh, kind of like this, maybe. Yeah, just expand all over here. So I have this masked off. Yeah, again, like, I can just mask off this part over here. I don't want to sculpt over this section over here. I just want to basically do this. Um, the problem is that I'm seeing right now, the way I'm doing it right now is this would take a long time to do it everywhere. So maybe this is not the best way. Um, I could also try to like just kind of scrape over it. And also this doesn't quite match the same style as the concepts. Um, I mean personally I would just use this as like a rough way of adding a bit more detail in. Mm. All these little sausages over here this yeah I'm not sure about this uh, let's try this a bit more oh Jesus Ah, uh, that's it. Use surface falloff is not working on multi-res. <laughs> Should have guessed. To be honest, this looks a bit disgusting. <laughs> I'm just gonna smooth over it again. I don't like it. Well, it was worth a shot. Um, I think uh, more of these, uh, oh yeah, there's, wait, there's questions for me. Oh yeah, this, uh, the, uh, uh, the dragging to smooth the mask, that's only right now on the sculpt development branch, but it's going to be made available soon. So if I expand a mask, like over here, uh, what you're doing right, what you can do right now in the uh, official releases is just to smooth it over and over again as like a simple um, operator. But soon uh, there's going to be an updated version of this where you just can, instead of doing it over and over again, you just do it once and you just drag left and right to define how much you smooth. Uh, the same thing is also the case for like growing the mask, so you can just like uh, drag left and right to grow or shrink the mask like this. So that's gonna be made available uh, soon-ish. Uh, it still needs to be um, worked out a bit more, I think. There were some issues with um, how much contrast it actually, how, how much it actually changes based on the density of the topology. It, it just needs to be, have, it just needs to have some, uh, some kinks worked out. But mostly it's like, I, I would say this is all pretty much final. Hmm. Let's see. Come on, switch the subject. Yeah, I'm also noticing that the that this switch object overlay is a bit performance dependent. It's not um, that's not great. Right now it's not even appearing at all. Oh, it's not supported for multiverse probably. Uh -huh. What are the other essentials? Like I could leave the hair technically like like this. It's not it's not great, but I want to get some other stuff done as well. So um, 
Let's just see. I wanted to work a bit more on the horns. So essentially... Um, yeah, I just want to have like a version right now visible that is not glitched. Like this. Okay, perfect. I'm going to also duplicate this and move it into my helpers collection so I don't lose uh, how it looks like originally. And I'm going to apply the modifiers. Like this. Okay, now I have full control again over uh, the shape and I can reshape this a bit more. I'm going to again use the use surface fall off option. to uh, adjust the thickness a bit more on the tips. It's supposed to be a bit sharper. Kind of like this. Okay. Um, the horns are definitely something I wanted to adjust a lot. I want to make the shape look interesting from both the side and come on, and from the front. Like so, the uh, they're they're still symmetrical, but they look they look good from multiple angles. Let's see if I can get this working. Okay, uh, let's see. I also want to separate these parts uh, via face set, so I can just with Shift W. Oh wait, whoa, wait. Oh, face sets are no, no, not visible right now. I can just like um, separate this into its own face set, hide it. Do the same thing over here uh, and hide this. And then this is also just one face set, I would say, like this. Okay, and now what I could do is I want to have this division over here, like with th these horns. So I was wondering if I could, oh, first of all, uh, let's just get rid of this. I don't need these faces. Go back into scope mode. Okay. I want to expand this by topology along the boundary. Um, can I kind of make a recursion of this? Like, uh, no, this is. I need to use the other the other mode. I <laughs> can't read the tooltips. Uh, I need to mention this again. This is something that needs to be figured out in the UI at some point. So if I make this tiny, I can finally read the entire line down there like all of the shortcuts that are listed. And what I need is uh, W and Q. Yes, that's the one that I wanted. I can increase the size of the UI again. Now, so now with W, I can make uh, these, I can repeat uh, the steps. Like this. Kinda. Okay. That's the right direction, but I want to do it a bit differently. So, let's W again. Let's do this a lot more. Like this. Perfect. Um, then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Again, along topology with W, I can increase the amount like this. That looks good. And then the same thing over here. 
Shift W. Uh, with W, I can increase the amount of counts. And I'm gonna do it with, with pressing three. And this is still not perfect, but I can paint some of these uh, problematic areas out. So I can just use the uh, the draw face sets brush over here in the toolbar, and I can draw a bit more on top to get exactly the face sets that I want. Uh, same story, pretty much over here. Like I think I could like paint this to be more precisely what I want. I knew that these areas would be problematic, but this is working pretty much fine. Over here, it's a bit tricky. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I see Mike ask what are all the face sets for. So they're like still a relatively new feature in Blender. And it's essentially like, uh, it's like having selection sets in a uh, sculpt mode. So now that I have these face sets, these colored faces, uh, they be essentially belong to each other. Everything that has the same color is the same face set. And now I could like point at one of these and press H and I immediately hide everything else that is not part of this face set. Shift H does the opposite. Uh, so it makes it really easy to hide uh, parts of Blender, but you can also automatically mask uh, parts like this. Like I could mask expand, and when I hold Control, I could mask everything that is part of this face set, and just maybe also hover over this one, and this is also getting masked. Uh, and then I immediately have all of this masked off. Uh, oh, now what I want to do is I would like to. Uh, first off, subdivide this one more time. I want a bit more resolution out of this. And the face sets stay. Um, now I could mask by face set boundary. Uh, it's like with Alt A, you get this pie menu. And now everything that is a face set boundary is not going to get affected by whatever I do in sculpt mode. So if I use the filter, the mesh filter, I could inflate and drag and drop and just drag and I immediately get this effect and this is kind of what I was aiming for with these like indents so uh, let's just decrease the strength a bit uh, I'm also going to subdivide this one more time and just drag this a little bit more I'm going to remove the, um, the auto masking. Actually, I wonder if I could um, do the opposite, like only mask the boundaries. No, I don't think so. Okay. In that case, I'm going to first uh, oh, scale this down and then mask by face at boundaries and scale everything up again. And then stop masking by face at boundaries and smooth everything a little bit. There we go. And now I have this effect. It's a bit jagged along these lines, but I know how, I think I know how to get rid of that. So before I did all of this, I can also in the mesh filter pick relax face sets. And if I drag, now it just immediately relaxes these lines over here. So this is what it does. Uh, it's not perfect, it's not super ideal, but it really helps a lot. So um, now at least this is a smooth straight line. And I could uh, now do exactly the same again. First, uh, decrease the strength a bit. I can deflate everything a bit. Uh, then auto mask by face set boundary. Inflate everything like this and then stop art masking by face at boundary set this to smooth increase the strength again and smooth everything a little bit there we go uh, and I did something wrong because this happened again interesting aha uh -huh. 
Okay, I'm going to smooth everything except the face set boundaries. Yep, this is more what I wanted. Um, over here it's messy. <laughs> but I wonder if I can resolve this somehow. Maybe not. Um, maybe I should just... Yeah, I should just smooth over it. Screw it. Uh, so I can just get rid of all the influence of face sets and everything I did and just sculpt over this a bit more. There we go. Especially those tips, they're messed up, so I really need to, need to heavily s smooth over these. Maybe inflate them. Yeah. Smooth, inflate. Oh boy. Yeah, they're quite messed up. Uh, but that was also because there's a face set over here. Um, well, that's fine. Uh, I, this can be fixed uh, another way later on. Or it can be left like this because it doesn't need to be super clean. Okay. Let's just smooth this. So that we at least don't see the mistake that much. <laughs> yeah, I should have cleaned up the face sets a bit at the tips. Can smooth over this a bit more. Like this. Bring back the rest, and there we have it. Uh, <laughs> I hope this was understandable or helpful. I really love the inclusion of the um, the uh, mask and face set expand and all of these auto masking options and stuff like that. It really helps a lot. Um, now what I could do is... Um, yeah, let's just actually uh, add a multi-res and unsubdivide this. Just so we have a uh, simpler base. And I actually want to, oh boy. I actually want to add a bit of asymmetry to this, but in a non-destructive way. So I'm again going to add a shape key and remove X mirror. Uh, and now I can, oh, if I remove surface fall off and sculpt on the base resolution. That's the important bit. We can add a bit of uh, asymmetry. So let's just have a look at this. I want to really have the still have this wide arc over here. I can adjust these now finally to look a bit more like how how I want it to be. I wish the this toggle would work uh, for shape keys. It essentially lets you sculpt on the base resolution while seeing the resolution that you have set here. So it would just make it a bit simpler to actually also see what I'm working on. But I mean the whole shape key workflow needs to be supported anyway for sculpt mode. It's all still planned. It's just a lot of work. There we go. This kind of works. I mean, I don't want these to be really asymmetric. It's just a subtle thing. So just turn this on and off and there's just a tiny bit of asymmetry I would actually like to do the same thing for the head um, I mean there was also one little fix I wanted to do with the uh, eyes Let's see oh okay now um, Let's see, I could like 
shift one of the eyelets a bit up. Just to put, I just want to want to put like really subtle asymmetry in here. It's probably not going to be even visible much. I could also just uh, rotate the eye, like both of these eye objects around the active object. I'm a bit sad that the uh, that the head shape doesn't really match the concept, but I still think that's really difficult to do. I got it pretty much as close as I could. <laughs> because uh, if I want to get it any closer, I would have to make the face heavily asymmetric. Add a lot of volume over here while this stays pretty much the same and um, it doesn't quite work. Actually, let's pick the... Uh, the paintbrush again, because I wanted to put a bit more color onto the nose. I think this might help. Also on the lips. I just want to add a bit of subtle color variation, even if it doesn't quite make sense. Um. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> the mouth is still open. Let's actually isolate this. I want to go into edit mode and actually just uh, select all of this. And just... oh. Um, let's just extrude this and scale it down. And then I'm going to try to grid fill this. Let's see if it works. It actually works. <laughs> then I can add a bunch of, uh, oh Jesus, a bunch of loop cuts in here. Let's just make it 10. Yeah. So we have some geometry inside. And in sculpt mode, I can then just smooth this over. Um, really, j really just go in here and smooth this a lot. Um, wait. Uh, I can also just hide these bits with Shift H and then with W, invert visible. And now I have this specifically selected. Uh, I want to actually hide this, select all of this. Oh boy. No, that's not gonna work. Maybe it will. Uh, let's unhide all of this. Hide this, this edge loop. So we can select all of this, which is selected. So I can select all of this, which is selected. Um, and then in sculpt mode, I can just say face set from edit mode selection. So now I actually have control over the inner mouth a bit more specifically. Um, so I can actually drag this in. Uh, I can auto mask by facets. So I only adjust this one facet over here, the pink one, which is the inner mouth. I can smooth it. Um, and inf and inflate it, or in this case, deflate it with the inflate brush. Um, let's actually do it with the uh, with the filter like this, and smooth it. Yeah, that kind of worked. What's going on with the topology, though? Uh, well, I'm gonna disable the auto masking by face set so I can like smooth the transitions a bit easier. Like this. 
Okay, I'm gonna bring everything else back. Um, remove the local view, uh, switch this actually back to vertex colors in here, essentially. Let's see. Yeah, this works. I mean, it's just, it's a subtle thing, but... Oh man. Uh, I, I at least wanted to have that closed. Then I could also maybe also like add a tongue or something. Um, how long have you been doing Blender? Good question. I think the first time I opened Blender, it was pretty much 10 years ago. Um, and since then, it was like uh, a long learning period, <laughs> I would say. I'm still learning. Everyone is still learning <laughs> who's using Blender. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been working at the Blender Animation Studio now for a bit over three years. Oh my god. <laughs> What is the music? Uh, you can find a link in the in the video description. Uh, it's Stevia Sphere. Um, it's like it's an artist uh, who does a lot of CC uh, by licensed music, and I, I just really love the sound. He does like various projects, um, which are all <laughs> uh, some of them quite different. And I just made a playlist of some of the albums of his that I like the most. One of the albums is even called uh, Delete the Cube, so I have a suspicion he's a fellow Blender user, but uh, I would need to find out. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. I also want to adjust the horns a bit. I can select it. Let's go back to the shading workspace. Because what I could do over here is just a simple trick of... Um, no, pointiness is not... I wanted to use pointiness, uh, but that only works in cycles, so let, let's actually also use ambient occlusion. Screw it. So uh, let's, let's say local only. Does that actually work? It doesn't seem to be doing much. Can I? <laughs> Even though I called it the, uh, like, I said that this is a sculpting time, uh, a sculpting live stream. There's still a bit of fiddling with materials in it. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish pointiness would be a thing. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Um, the horns and. Uh, once, uh, uh, once there's going to be a bit more shading on the character, uh, there could be a bit more color variation in it. It would be ideal. Uh, but the next thing is definitely uh, the branch. That still needs to be done. Uh, I see some more questions. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, give us the playlist. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I should add uh, the specific albums in the in the description. Uh, Michelle the sheep is kind of not a sheep because he got a super long tail. Yeah, it's like a dragon sheep creature. It's snake sheep. <laughs> I like that. Um, um, dirty vertex colors uh, is being suggested in the in the comments and yes that is true i was not considering it because i have a multi-res but to be honest i should just apply it like oh i can't because i have shape keys mm. um well to be honest i'm just going to apply the uh, the shape key now i have the topology uh, i have the uh, actual topology to use dirty vertex colors. So in here I can go in vertex colors and say dirty vertex colors. And there we go. This is gonna... This is actually going to do something similar to... very similar to pointiness. Let's, as an input, put in call. Uh, actually, should we name it to... Uh, Let's just call it cavity, because that's essentially what it is. Uh, there we go. Uh, put it in a color ramp. 
like this. Uh, I'm gonna copy this color over here. Put this inside. I think this should be fine. Uh, let's actually compare it to the concept. I think now looking at the horns, they look a bit more shiny to me. But I don't want to make this too extreme. Ah, let's just keep it like this. This is fine. Uh, but yeah, the main thing still missing uh, is the branch. And this is a bit tricky because I don't want to add all of the surface detail over here. I just want to imply a bit via multi-res sculpting. So what I could do is, oh, it's, it already has a multi-res on it. Um, wait, uh, how much more sculpting life will you do there? Awesome. Uh, I'm already going a bit over time. Uh, no, I'm, I'm like, uh, theoretically, I'm, I'm already almost done with my time, but I'm going to do a bit more just to get this to be done. I think like I don't want to do another live stream on this character if I don't ha unless I have to and it would be nice to just wrap this up um, uh, can you try what it looks like in cycles for a moment uh, yes that is actually interesting so I wonder so I, I hope it's, it's using the same settings over here so if I go to cycles um, and use Oh, what's happening to the... Ah. <laughs> I think it gets confused with the... Uh... Yeah, it gets confused with uh, vertex colors. I don't know why. Let's see. Uh, which object is it? Over here. So if I toggle this... Ah, that's a bit sad. Um, I don't know why it gets confused with the uh, scope vertex colors. Maybe I need to specifically select it. Yeah, now it works. Okay, I'm also going to enable denoising. So if I go over here in the render settings, I can go to... Uh, where is it actually? No, in the... over here in... I forgot where the actually forgot where the uh, denoising settings are. Well, that's... Uh, light? Nah, it shouldn't be in uh, render layer. It should be in the render settings. Why am I missing it? Uh, if anyone can tell me in the comments where the denoising settings are, that would be amazing. I'm completely missing it. Sampling. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's true. Okay. Let's just start sample at three. Oh no. I forgot. No. It's loading the kernels every time you use blend, uh, cycles for the first time. So now I'm a bit stuck in a loading screen. Damn. Happens every time you update Blender. Or you use every time you use a new Blender version, it needs to load the render kernels first um, before it can actually use cycles to the fullest. Yeah, this is gonna take a little bit. Uh, but yes, essentially the last little bits I would love to work on is uh, the branch needs a bit of work. Um, and I could we're, oh, I still need to add the scales. That's something that's missing. Um, hmm. The scales need a bit of color variation, I think, and just a tiny bit of detail. Especially now that I detailed the... Ah, here we go. Now that I detail, detailed the horns. So if I now go to cycles, it should just work. There we go. Yep. It looks very similar to Eevee. Um, that's one thing I really love is like if you just go between Eevee and Cycles, especially since the shaders are so simple, it's barely a difference. It's a bit 
cycles is gonna be a bit more expensive but also giving you a bit better results but if you want something like this uh there's nothing wrong with using eevee as a preview render engine for the viewport it's amazing um let's see the branch So, I already have a multi-res modifier on it. That's helpful. Uh, I can subdivide it again. Uh, let's subdivide it another time. Um, let's see. I want to try something, actually. I want to try to... Can I extend the dimensions of a camera a little bit. I want to zoom out. I changed my mind on the camera position. Zoom out a little bit more. Yes. Because I want to have a bit more of that branch in view. So... Now I can... Let's actually just go down to the base level. I'm going to readjust this with the pose brush a little bit this and now I can get a bit more of that feeling like it's a really long branch that is sticking out of like this matches a bit more the concept uh, for the wooden branch do you think that using an alpha stencil should do the trick or even using displacement modifier with a texture along the geometry. Yes. I think the right way to go with a branch is to eventually add like a procedural shader on top uh, to create some of that bark material. And it's really interesting that like, uh, I think we're, I'm, we're probably going to just recycle some of the stuff we've been doing for Sprite Fright. So if I go to the Blender Cloud, uh, let's see if I can do this really quickly. I was just, I just want to quickly go over to the tree that we did in there. I can go to asset pr uh, progression and let's just go to environment assets. Yes, if you look at the trees, uh, like there's a lot of stuff that you can do with procedural materials and Simon did an amazing job uh, exploring various different options. And I think if we just kind of add like procedural uh, shader on top, especially since the uh, topology is still uh, pretty clean, uh, it, would, it would be amazing. Like, um, I would love it if Simon could have a look at this model afterwards. <laughs> Give it some love. Uh, so, the main thing I want to worry about right now is just to add some temporary details and a bit more uh, variety to the shape. So I could like uh, add some, especially at the tip over here. Um, this is gonna be pretty important. I just want to like scrape off the ends over here with a scrape brush to get like that hard edge. Yes. And then I could use the grab brush. Let's see. Oh, is it? No. Uh, the experimental feature for the crab brush was removed, damn it. Um, well, I could use, uh, let's see, I can change the hardness slider for the grab brush. Yes, and then I get this sort of effect where I can like pull out these bigger chunks. And I want to get this sort of effect using that. So I can just like pull out this chunk over here. Uh, I'm also going to hide these guys for now. Uh, then decrease the size of the brush, pull out this chunk, increase the size of the brush a lot, pull out this one, and now let's just pick a small one and just pull out this, and the one over here, kind of like this. And we already get something like, uh, like in the concept, sort of. You can also do it again with this tinier one right here. But the problem is 
that it's like now stretching the geometry a lot. So I could, I'm gonna say for a moment, I could use the slight relax brush to just kind of shift. Uh, now I'm going to actually smooth over it. <laughs> and with a draw sharp brush, just go back in and sculpt a bit over it. It's not a super uh, uh, tidy way of doing this, I would say. Like, not it's not super clean. But it works well enough for now. Like, if I look at this, this is already getting me closer to what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. What's the, what's the big meme of Blender? I think it's the X to delete the cube. Yes, I mean... Uh, I mean, I also have like, uh, instead of just uh, deleting the cube every time, I just subdivided the cube and made it into a sphere for my startup file. So I just have an enhanced version of the cube to start with every time. <laughs> That's also one way to go. Um, let's see. I could fill in this, even though it's not... E ah, what am I doing? It's not even visible. Um... But I could use the clay strips brush with, yeah, to create some of these patterns in kind of a rough way. Like this. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yep. I think I could also use something with uh, face sets to achieve this sort of effect, but I'm just gonna do it do it manu manually. Um, let's see if this if this works. The good thing about uh, clay the clay strips brush is that you can kind of start off with some structure, even if it's a bit random or you have very little control over it. And then you can define it further. I think that's still one of the main uh, advantages of using the clay strips brush. In addition to just being able to easily adjust your shapes and building forms. I just really love creating these, these profiles over here. Like this. kind of suggesting some lines here. Okay, I'm gonna smooth over this. And now I have already a bit more structure. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, real Blender users don't delete the cube. They they use the hand that has been dealt to them and they make something amazing out of it. <laughs> okay, okay. So I have a bit of structure on here and I can like, of course, like put a bit more randomness in here if I wanted to, like a bit of... Like just deforming this branch a little bit so it's less super clean. Uh, I'm also gonna add a bit more of these like little ripples in here. Um. Okay, let's just use the draw sharp for a moment. And just sculpt more into this. Actually, nah. I'm gonna try it with the clay strips brush again. <laughs> Is that possible? Nah, I think it actually... It's too messy. It's not working. Mm. 
Um, also, I'm going to make the shade smooth. Uh, let's just also enable cavity. Uh, usually it gives me... I don't like to use it because it gives like some what of a fake impression. But I want to add a bit of a cavity effect on top anyway afterwards. So this might actually give me a nice preview. Drawing a bit on top with a draw sharp brush like this. I just want this to be kind of rough to get an idea of the tree. But I think this is going to be thrown out if we do a shading pass on top. This is just to have somewhat of a nicer preview of the sculpt right now. Uh, yeah, uh, I was thinking about that with the drawing the masks. Uh, face sets would also be an idea. Uh, like I could first draw some uh, masks and then inflate or like sculpt over it. The thing is uh, This is supposed to be so chaotic anyway that I could just like draw over it anyway like this um, It's also not supposed to be super clean so This kind of works for me uh, But yes, if you want to do it much more clean and precise I can recommend to actually Use like textured brushes, stencils, something that gives you a bit more control or like a bit more de actual detail instead of just drawing like this. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is already kind of getting closer to what I want. I can just like bring everything back. Uh, I want to also over here add a bit of color variation based on the shader. So let's just again. I might do the the cavity thing again. Let's just see. Yeah, I'm gonna do that afterwards actually. Uh, Let's just let's just keep working on this one now, like it is. Like this. Is there any other element to this? No. I was thinking maybe there's like a tiny branch sticking out or something, but no, it's just a dead tree. Uh, oh. I'm getting a bit lost in the, in the cable. <laughs> Uh, but I would say I'm like relatively getting close to the end. I might still work a bit more on the on the hair, but the main thing still missing are those scales. Um, on the back side over here, I can do it a bit more rough like this. Doesn't matter. This is fine. this okay uh, let's see what I would really like to do is uh, first of all adjust the tree a bit so that the the hoofs of Michelle are actually making a bit of a better contact point like this I can also remove cavity again. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to move over to shading. I'm going to apply the modifier. So now this resolution actually exists. Um, and I'm 
going to add a subdivision surface modifier to it anyway. Uh, so in, uh, let's save again, just to be sure. I'm also gonna get rid of those HDI preview spheres. Um, I'm going to go to vertex painting and add dirty vertex colors again. And I'm going to ca call that layer again, cavity. There we go. So now I can input that in here. Let's look at it. Yeah, this is looking good. With a converter color ramp, I can change this a bit further. Let's use the same color over here, but make it a bit more desatch yeah, desaturated, darker, like this. something like this plug it into the base color and <laughs> increase the roughness we don't need the uh, the tree to look this uh, yeah I mean this looks good this looks fine uh, let's move over back here It's really rough, but it works, at least for now. Um, and if we want to add a bit more um, shaders on top, we can like add the multi-res modifier back on top, unsubdivide, and should be fine. Um, the next thing, the scales, and then at least all the elements are kind of there. Uh, but actually, I might just sidetrack for a moment because I want to use the scene world. Let's just look at it from the camera. Because the scene world, if we compare it to the concept art, also looks a bit different. There's a gradient missing. So... I wonder... If I can add this gradient, like... I forgot uh, what kind of um, coordinate I need to use. Maybe... Maybe I can just use camera. Um, oh, actually. Let's just plug all of this in. Use the camera coordinates and then a mapping node to actually define where this is. Um, now nah, I want to, ah, damn it. I want to have like a, a vignette effect. I like hmm. maybe someone in the comments knows like a good way of doing that to add like a vignette from the perspective of the camera on the world shader um, wait uh, I can like scale this down maybe This is kind of getting where I want it to be with very little control. <laughs> uh, sorry, reading the comments a little bit. Oh wow, wait, I think this is actually working. Yep, this is <laughs> it's actually kind of working. <laughs> this is not the most efficient way of doing this. Um, I'm actually going to um, make this gradient node really wide so I have a bit more control over it. Uh, kind of like this. I mean, let's just actually select the camera. Uh, where is it actually? Uh, do I have it not selectable? I think it's extras. Yeah. Uh, I want to select the camera. And actually, 
in here, viewport display, there's the passport too. And I can just make it stronger. So I can focus a bit more on the vignettes over here. Like anything that's visible in the camera. Um, kind of like this. Why is this so big? <laughs> wow, that's insane. Um, let's see. Okay, now, uh, can I add a bit of noise to this? I mean, I, I won't get like a texture like this, but I wonder if I should try. <laughs> um, Okay, let's just add um, a noise. Wait, yeah, let's just add a noise texture. Where is it? Um, noise texture. Um, like this. Generate it. Okay, I can increase the scale and the detail. might actually be not the best way to do this. I don't know. It's, I don't want to distort it, actually. No, no distortion. Maybe a little. Nah. Or maybe yes. Okay, now with Control shift right click, I can mix these. And I can put them in here. Let's see. I want to mix in the noise with the slider. Let's actually just multiply it. Um, multiply. Uh, I might actually have a better idea. Let's just use this as a mask. To multiply this on top. This might be a bit finicky. Oh, and I need to invert this. Um, so now I get less noise in the middle and more noise on the outer edges. And that is more like what is happening over here, I think. Or well, kinda. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I think I should stop doing this in a moment. I'm like using a lot of time to Add like a temporary background <laughs> shader. <laughs> Let's see. How much does this compare? Kinda. Kinda. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. Um, uh, or actually. One last thing I would like to do is if I look at this again, I would like to stretch this uh, along the... No, I can't. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, oh well. Let's just work with this. And for the actual world, just gonna increase the brightness a bit and desaturate it. This is getting closer. I'm getting close. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. I think for the um, for Michelle in general, I would like to also uh, make his color palette a bit more bluish. I can just do that with the color filter. Um, maybe I can just shift the hue. No, no, no. The hue is already fine, but I can. Nah, the hue isn't fine. Uh, let's actually try adding a bit more blue. I don't see it actually update in the in the shader. No, maybe. Yeah, I think I see the difference. Yeah, this is gonna be a shading thing. I'm gonna leave that for now, and I'm going to do the last little bits of the sculpt, which is essentially the scales here on the side. Which are a bit strange, I would say. Like I would, I think I'm gonna um, adjust the scale a bit more. Let's just actually select all of the different ones and make them make them uh, a single uh, user in the object data, and then I can apply the modifier. Let's actually subdivide it one more time. And now again, I can link the object data. <laughs> so these are again still all the same op uh, the same uh, geometry, just on different objects. And I can just kind of sculpt over this. Like this. Kind of similar to how it looks like in the concept. Just this little chunk. Kinda. Uh, let's see. I also want to paint this. So if I go into sculpt mode again, I can just pick the the paintbrush. Let's just pick this color and pick a brighter color for the tips. Like this. But the color is not actually used in the material. I can fix that. Uh, I can just pick vertex color in here for the material and that should fix it, yes. Like that. Okay, and then I can use these objects. I would like to use the same ones pretty much over here. So I can just shift D duplicate these. Um, and then I can just put them over here as well. So how do I imagine this? It's a bit strange. So let's say these scales actually continue over here. until they kind of fizzle out completely. But then we have the scales also here on the side. Like this. I can apply the scale on this object and just, yeah, also subdivide this and apply. Um, yeah, and I can just duplicate these sometimes and kind of like this. I mean, that's kind of how I imagine it. And I can just like uh, shift D duplicate these, control M along the 
x-axis and put them over here as well just so I have them on both sides but also as their own objects uh, <laughs> Invert the normals. Oh. Not really happy with the color of the hair. Maybe I can add like another part in the middle, which is a bit more saturated red ish and then this is i don't know there's more things going on in the hair and i would love to be able to replicate it but for that i would have to paint on it This is, oh man, this needs like more detail because right now it, to be honest, it looks a bit disgusting. <laughs> I'm not happy with this at all. Um, no, this needs like strand details and stuff like that. Um, maybe I can spend a bit more time on that. character from Cosmos Laundromat if I had a penny every time someone said that. <laughs> uh, okay, wait. Let's just uh, again go in here. Subdivide. Hmm. Actually, uh, can I? No, I don't want to use the clay strips brush for this. This is really not the, the right direction for this. Uh, probably the, the best way to do the hair is with an actual groom. Um, I'm just not quite confident to leave it like this, the hair. I get this brain feeling from looking at this and it's not... Great. But I also don't know the best way of making it look fuzzy. Uh, except if I go more into shading and texturing. Hmm. Uh, what actually happens if, like, oh my god! <laughs> happens if I remove this whole thing, this color influence. I think it helps at least to add this contrast. But it just doesn't quite look like hair. Um, the sharp mesh filter. Nah. Uh, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I tried the sharp mesh filter f uh, a few times and it doesn't quite give the results that I want out of it. Um. Hmm. 
hair simulation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like uh, a groom could be could be a better way of handling this to give the hair actually the look that it needs because this is just not quite there. But you could say the same thing about many aspects of the character where like adding a bit more detail is what is required to make it look right. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I think the tail could use some adjustments. means I need to adjust these scales again but I don't mind um, oh well uh, let's actually do it okay I can just turn on snapping and just move these around individually they're just gonna snap back to the surface, just like that. Uh, what else? Mm, is it shortcut you're using or screencast key? Sorry, I don't understand. Um, Probably something where I would love to have someone else at the team have a look at this and give their opinion. Uh, I thought I'd figure this out by now, but the hair is a bit tricky. A groom, more detail, and all that stuff could do that. Could be just what it needs, but. Um, Let's actually try something. I want to remove this one and just scale this one up. Oh, and I still have snapping enabled. So I have this really big one over here. And these snail shell like guys, I want to also get rid of them. And instead, scale up this one as well and this one too and just inflate it that way there's at least more um, variety oh Jesus what happened to this one? <laughs> oh no must have been snapping. Um. Oh, I had X symmetry enabled. I'm gonna get rid of this one. And with these two, let's just uh, symmetrize these. Uh, so this one gets copied over to this one. Perfect. And I'm actually going to merge these now because I, I don't need the symmetry. I can just adjust these individually. Um, what add-on do you use to show the shortcuts on the screen? Oh, it's, uh, it's called screencast keys. Um, you, can, uh, you can Google it and there's like a couple different versions, but I think the, the most supported and latest one is from Nuti. And it's, it's perfect for what I need. I don't need anything else. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
which new artist will be appearing on the live streams? Love the serious thingy. Would love Yelty over there. Yeah, it would be nice to have more people from the Blender Studio uh, join the live streams. Um, especially if we want to take this character further into shading. Um, if that will happen live, or like what, what the plan is with this character, we'll see. But for now, uh, it might also just end here. Well, I would love for there to be a bit of a feedback pass, like where the other people at the studio can at least look at this and give their opinion. Um, this is tricky though. This is really interesting. want to smooth this but wow this is this is making it look a bit disgusting these um, creases and the easiest way to get rid of the these would be to just remesh it but then I would just lose the the topology hmm. maybe I'll figure something out after after the stream but I mean, this is pretty much where I want it to be, most of, mostly at least. Um, I could like go in here and compare this a bit more. Like maybe, let's see, maybe pull this out a bit, pull this in, just so it matches the silhouette a bit more of the original. But I think it's pretty much there. Yeah. I think I would call this pretty much done. I'm uh, also getting like very over time, I would say. Um, but it's at least nice to have this, I would say like pretty much done. Um, at least the general sculpt of it. Like in terms of presentation, shading, texturing, there's still lots that can be done still. But uh, I don't need to solve this all right now. Um, so yeah, just looking at this right now, the, the, the background could use some work. This is just as a way of previewing the, the rough style. But I would say I'm pretty happy with this. At least for now. Uh, yeah, I'd call this done for now, today, at least. So I hope you have been enjoying this and I will see you next week, probably with something very different. Uh, but it was really fun to work on this little project for a few weeks. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions or something, you can also comment below the YouTube video. Um, and also, we're all available on the Blender Cloud uh, for like anything related to the film production or if you have any questions there. Like, we're trying to be helpful. <laughs> uh, yeah, then I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>